All right. Hey, guys. Happy Thursday or happy Wednesday for getting this early here. You got this book lesson right here. Uh, section 8.1.2. Got problems 8.13 to um, problem 8.16 here. So hopefully you find it in your textbook. Um, I just have a digital copy here. I think the page numbers are a little bit off. So I posted the page numbers for the digital copy that I'll attach to Google Classroom. So just look for these problems. Look for this lesson here in the hard copy of the textbook, and then you should be fine. Um, you should find it here. Okay, so anyways, what you just did um, during the early portion of class on Wednesday was uh, some diamond problems. Diamond problems are important because they allow us to find uh, two numbers that produce a particular sum and produce a particular product. And that's important because what we've had in the last few weeks we've been looking at this, um, we have been interested in kind of like this, like, right? This is this here is a sum, okay? This here is a sum right now here. We've been interested in going from sum to product uh, and vice versa, okay? We're getting more interested in doing sum to product now, but previously, right, we start with a product, uh, or actually, yeah, we start with a sum and then we get to go to a product, so here. So anyways, in this problem here, you gotta do 10x squared minus 35x minus 4x, okay? So we can combine like terms right there. That's gonna be negative 39x, right? Because 35, subtract four from it, well, negative 35, subtract 4, we're moving 4 away from 0, that's negative 39x. Um, and then we add 14 here, okay? So there's my sum. I checked that one off. Um, i got to write this as a product here, okay? I'm not doing the diamond problems yet, but I just wanted to get that out there. Sum and product, diamond problems will be good for them. They're going to play into this whole generic rectangle thing here a little bit later, okay? This one here, they didn't give us this, right? Notice here, this problem here, they didn't give us the full-out sum. They had already figured out where our x's go where our x's go in the generic rectangle, okay? So that's gonna be the purpose of once we get to these diamonds up top here, the purpose of the diamonds is to figure out where my x's are gonna go in my rectangles so that I can find the factors of this particular sum right here, okay? What's something, what's the base times by height? And each of those would be factors. The base is a factor, the height is a factor because base times height equals that area as a sum right here, okay? So let's uh, let's check it out here. How do I get my factors now? All right, I gotta get a height here. Um, nothing's really jumping out to me. This is an odd number here, so that's probably mean there's probably gonna be an odd number up here, or it could be an odd number down there. I don't know, start playing around with it. This one's actually a little bit harder here. Well, this is, this is here, this mean, these are two even numbers, so we need an even number down here. So maybe I'll just start trying some stuff out. Well, this is negative. Maybe I'll make this negative two. I mean, I could have made it negative four. Well, that, that would mean that this would have to be two X right here. And then I got five. Okay, so this looks like it might work. You have to just kind of try different things out. Take a risk, right? Take a risk here. And it looks like it's gonna play, uh, it's gonna work out perfectly for me here because I put negative seven up here and it all checks out. So here, you just gotta try different things. I just happen to you know fall on into it just by trying different things here. Reasoning through it. Oh, these are even numbers. This is either gotta have to be negative two here or I could have tried negative four and then realized that, well, uh, Really work out with this here. It worked out here. So, anyways, I, I just randomly picked out a good one here. Okay, so that's written out as a sum. This is this particular polynomial right here. This is a trinomial, right? Trinomial has one term, two terms, three terms, um, and then this is written in the standard form of the trinomial because remember we talked about ordering one time a few weeks ago. Uh, highest exponent to lowest exponent, and the exponent here for the for the variables technically the zeroth power is fourteen. It's a constant times by x to the zero the power, right? x to the zero power means one. So anyways, um, just a little bit of background there that again, I wanna sprinkle through some stuff here because if you had a more traditional textbook, they would really have you know that stuff down and memorize kind of the definitions here. Uh, but here, right, a little more definitions here. Here I've made this, this is the product. This is a product of binomials, right? Binomial for two. These two terms times these two terms actually equals these three terms right here equal this trinomial here that we have with no uh, parentheses and we have it written in standard form. Okay, so 10x squared minus 39x plus 14, it's equivalent to 2x minus 7 times by the quantity uh, 5x minus 2. And that's that, okay? So this was pretty easy to factor this here. Why? Well, they already gave us the generic rectangle filled out. Okay, generic rectangle filled out. So you're not going to get that much this lesson. It was really just the first one here. That they, it's for the end of factoring here. we got to figure out how we can use this diamond here to really figure out this puzzle here of setting up our generic rectangle. Okay, it says here, does this generic rectangle fit, Kate, fit uh, Casey's pattern? Demonstrate that the product of each diagonal, diagonal is equal. Okay, so remember, that was Casey's pattern is that you take this. Okay, I got this here. What? 10x squared times by 14. i got to demonstrate that the product of that, right, 10 times by 14 is what? 140 
x squared times x to the zeroth power, right? That would just equal one. Um, well, that's just x to the zero times x squared. Two plus zero is two. So I just have an x squared there, okay? 140 x squared for that diagonal here. What about the other diagonal up top? Let's get this one here. So we got negative 35 x times by negative four x. And that's gonna be x times x again is x squared. 35 times four, that's a little bit hard here, right? 30, well, 30 times four would be 120. And five times four would be 20. So yeah, 140, there we go. And negative times a negative is a positive, okay? So you reason through it in your head, you can maybe just jam to a calculator, but yes, okay? We got there, that yes here. Yes, it does. Yes, it sure does, right? It sure does. A little enthusiasm as you guys are doing this Algebra 1 assignment here, okay? It sure does. They both multiply to 140 X squared. And that's, that's what's true, right, of our rectangles, of our generic rectangles. If it is actually factorable, if we can actually... Uh, create a generic rectangle or a rectangle building out with, with tiles, it's going to have that relationship. The diagonals multiply to be the same thing here. Okay, so that's going to help us think about our diamond problems about why, right, these two things here, negative 35 and negative 4, needed to multiply to 140 positive, but they also needed to add to negative 39x because in, right, they didn't give it to us at the beginning here, but, but in a normal textbook, right, it would just give you these trinomials be like, find the factors, find the products here. Well, negative 39 X, well, what do I need to do? I need to figure out how I can split up my X's to add to negative 39, but then also to multiply to, well, 10 times 14, right? That other diagonal is 10 times 14. How, how we get them to, to multiply to 140, right? That's the, really the trick here to getting this, this generic rectangle set up, okay? If it's a little bit confusing for you with the process here, from that two minute, right, silent video we watched in class, at the beginning of Wednesday's class here, then follow along, right? They're gonna take you through it here in today's lesson here. As we get to factoring, big lesson, right? That's why I wanna make this two days, right? Might as well make this two days. We're leading into it here. Factoring quadratic expressions, okay? Just a reminder of what the word quadratic means, okay? What the word quadratic means is, right? We have an X squared is the highest, highest exponent for the variable, okay, x squared, okay? So this is a quadratic up top here, okay? Because we have x squared in the sum, okay? You're gonna see the, the highest variable in the sum, okay? It's the highest exponent in the sum, okay? That's what quadratic means, right? The word quad means four, right? Quad, quad means four, quadratic, and quadratic has a squaring component to it, right? Squaring, square has four sides, right? So, so that's sort of where the word quadratic comes from, okay? So think x squared here. Here, this is quadratic, right? This is quadratic right here because we have an x squared term right here, okay? That's going to fit the definition of being a quadratic expression, right? Quadratic polynomial in that also too, this is x to the first power, that's x to the zero power. There's no cubic term, right? It's not a cubic expression. There's nothing to the third power, nothing to the fourth power. So the highest exponent that x gets is two. That's something called a quadratic, and that's sort of what we're beginning to study now here. Okay, using algebra tiles, factor this. That is, use the tiles to build a rectangle and then write its area as a product here, okay? So uh, you might have to mess with this a little bit here. Whoa, algebra tiles here. So hey, maybe sketch it out, right? Sketch it out in your diagrams here, just to show you that what we're gonna do in a second is gonna be a little bit faster. Than what I'm doing here. You might be thinking, why? I just want to do the fast thing right now. Okay, so I have an x squared piece here. If there are two x's, I can either put the x squared right here or I can put it right here. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter here because I got two x squared. Oops, sorry, two x squared in this corner here. Okay, got an x squared piece, got an x squared piece. Just sketch it out, right? It says build it, but we're not in class right now, so we won't build it. So just go ahead and sketch it out. x squared here and x squared here. Then we got a plus three. We got to figure out where to put a plus three thing here is, and we got to fit in five x's. So this could be a little bit tough here. Well, if I have a one, one of those X's over here, I could put four over here, but that would only mean two ones, two ones. I gotta get three ones somehow, okay? So yeah, I'm either gonna lay out the three ones like this or lay out three ones like that. Is this actually factorable right here? We have two X squareds uh, and well, I got two of them right here. So maybe if I put two right here, and I put three this way. Ah, I think I've got it here. If I laid them out like this, I've got one right here, got another one right here, got another one right here. There are my three ones. One, 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 right? Three, there's my plus three. Here's my two X squareds and check it out here. There is one X. Here is two, oops. here is two X, here is three X, and here is four and five X. 
There we go. I figured it out. I got it. Yes. Oh, feels good when you get there. Okay. Use the tiles to build out the rectangle. Then it's right. It's area as a product. Okay. So this thing right here, it equals, well, what are its dimensions here? Well, this is width of two X. This is width of three. And this is a height of, well, this is X and that's one. This is a height of X plus one. So what we got this as a product is we know that X plus one times by two X plus three right? That product right there, and there's our answer right here. Um, it would generate, right? A rectangle that looks like this. If we laid out uh, a height of, of x plus one and a width of two x plus three, it would result in a sum. This is this here, okay? So obviously we want to stay away from this, this, uh, this algebra tile stuff. Um, so we want a different method, which is what we're going to go through right now. All right, part B, uh, to factor with tiles like you did in A, you need to determine how to arrange the tiles to form a rectangle. Using a rectangle, generic rectangle to factor requires a different process, okay? So we don't actually wanna sketch it all out. We wanna figure out how we're gonna set up our generic rectangle. Miguel wants to use a generic rectangle to factor something different, okay? So here we have a different, guys, this is a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial, what do you guys think, right? I'm always doing call and response in class, right? If we're, if we're in person, whatever. This is a trinomial, okay? He wants to factor, right? Factor that trinomial, okay? And generate two binomials multiplied together to be on that, that trinomial. That's the pattern here that we're going to see. Okay, he knows that x squared and 8 go into the rectangle the location shown at right, okay? So this is my silent video. That's where I put them. We could have put 3x squared there, could have put 8 down there. It doesn't matter. The key is it goes along one diagonal, okay? And what we're going to know, right? What we're going to know is that 3x squared plus 8, well, that, 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 this diagonal is going to multiply to a, what, 24x squared, right? Because eight times three is 24. So that means that this diagonal here, this diagonal here is going to have to multiply to 24x squared. Okay. Just a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of a preview of how we're going to lay out our x's. What do we have to do? Okay. So we know is that finish the rectangle deciding how to place the 10x terms, then write the areas of product here. Okay. So kind of what you're doing here, right? If you followed Casey's pattern, was that these diagonals, okay, these diagonals, they multiply to become the same freaking thing. Okay, we know that X's are going to go here. X's are going to go here, right? They're going to go here because we have 10 of them. We have to figure out how to lay them. And we already know our ones go up here. Our eights go here and our X squares go here. And uh, right, so above an X squared piece is going to be X pieces. If, if your, your polynomial has X pieces um, to the right of it right here is going to be your X pieces as well. So we're just trying to figure out how to lay out the 10 X pieces. Okay. Is there a way? Is there a way? Okay. Is there a way, right? Our goal here is we want to figure out Okay, so we take 10, right? We want to figure out two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 10, okay? So two numbers where the product is going to be 24 and the sum is going to be 10. Because that's how many x's we have to work with here. And what is that, okay? What is that here? Sum to 10. So maybe start with the product, right? Because 24, right, has certain factors, okay? Has certain factors, right? There's 1 times 24 equals 24, but one plus 24 is 25. That doesn't work out. What about two times by 12? Okay, well, that would equal 24, but two plus 12 is 14. That doesn't work out. What about three? Three times by eight gets you to 24, but that's 11 X's. So just a little bit off here. Okay, how about one more? Okay, what about four times by six? That gets you to 24. And yes, it also, four plus six gets you to 10. Okay, it gets you to 10 here. So if I take four X times it to six X, I get 24 x squared, perfect, x squared up there. But if I take 4x and I add it to 6x here, I this is how I should place my 10x's here, right? I can put 4x here and 6x there, and now I've laid out a rectangle, I can actually factor it. You can do it too, you can verify it with pieces, but we're not doing that today here. All right, Kelly wants to find a shortcut. Okay, so this is sort of just reasoning through it without a diamond. We're gonna talk about the diamond here in a second here because I think the diamond is a way to stay organized, right? So you don't panic and you're like, wait, what? how do I arrange my x's again? Because this is sort of it, right? We gotta find two numbers that multiply 24 and add to 10. Uh, the diamond is gonna help us just come up with a, a process for us to put all of our information so we can quickly and easily factor something here. And that's sort of what the next problems are about here. Okay, Kelly wants to find a shortcut to factor 2x squared plus 7x plus six. What is that again? Is that a binomial? Is that a monomial? No, it's a trinomial, right? One term, two terms, three terms. Terms are separated by pluses or minuses. She knows 2x uh, squared uh, and 6 go into the rectangle, bottom left, top right. Uh, she also remembers Casey's pattern for diagonals without actually factoring yet what you know about the, the missing two parts of the generic rectangle, okay? Um, they, 
multiply to 12x squared, right? Why? 2 times 6 is 12. x squared times x to the first would just be x squared. Um, and add to 7x. Why? We have 7x here in the sum. They got to sum to 7x. They got to multiply to 12x squared. Okay, so to complete Kelly's generic rectangle, you need two x terms that have the sum 7x and a product of 12x squared. Create inside a dominant problem that reflects this situation, okay? So here's where the diamond problem comes into play right now is, well, you need to find two numbers that multiply to 7x squared and add to 7x here. You can maybe do that in your head right now, but I'm not going to recommend that. What I'd recommend when you encounter something like this right here, just very quickly, you're going to go a lot faster if you do this way. Jot down, steps are jot down the generic rectangle, put 2x squared there, put 6x there, sorry, 6 right there, but then draw your diamonds because this is what you're going to put in your diamond. You're going to put 7x down here, okay, 7x down here, um, because you have 7x's to deal with. What do you need to know? What do you know about those 7x's here? Well, they would, those 7x's, we have to split them up in such a way they'd have to multiply to 12x squared because that diagonal multiplies 12x squared. Therefore, that diagonal needs to also follow Casey's pattern, multiply to 12x squared here, okay? So we set up that diamond problem that represents that situation, and then it says use your results from the diamond problem to complete the generic rectangle here, and then write the area as a product of factors, okay? So um, I might set up my generic rectangle right here so you can follow along, right? You have the generic rectangle up here. I want to steal what they have here too, 2x squared, and we have 6 here. Let's complete the diamond problem. Okay, so here, this is telling us, this is why you've been doing these kind of all year here. You need two expressions that add to 7x and multiply to 12x squared. I always start with the product, right? Start with the product here, okay? So let's here, let's think here. Factors of 12, okay? I don't really need to think about the x part here, right? Factors of 12, um, because we know that, that that x is gonna be both of them here, right? There'll be an x here, there'll be an x here. We should figure out what the coefficient is here. So factors of 12, there are a lot of them, okay? I usually start at one, one times by 12. Is that gonna work out? No, does not multi does not add to seven x, okay? Two times by six, that's another way of getting to 12. Well, it adds to eight. That's not quite good enough here. Let's keep going. Let's go with three. Three goes into 12. Yeah, it goes into 12 four times, okay? So that means three times four. That's another option we can take. And you know what? That works, okay? That works because three plus four equals seven. There we go. So we have three X here. We got four X here. And now these guys, okay, three X can go there. And four X, sure, can go there. It doesn't really matter. It right? doesn't really matter where it's got to go, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put 4x here. I'm going to put 3x right here. And it says uh, down below here in 8, use your results of the diamond problem to complete the generic rectangle for that. And then write the area as a product of its factors. So steps were, right, put the 2x squared in here, 6 here, diamond problem, figure out where your x's go. And then finally, what you've been doing the past couple classes, which is pulling out the outside, pulling out the perimeter, and that's going to be the uh factors okay right so this is going to be called your factored form our factor form is going to equal well i gotta put my two here right two x because two goes into two it's a common factor of four as well two is not a factor of three right three is a prime number so i gotta have x here because two times by x is x squared and one times by two is two so two x squared that checks out um so now i need to put two up here and I put three down here. And look, it all checks out, right? It all checks out. You can do it quickly in your head to make sure it double checks, it checks out. Three times two is six, three times X is three X, two X times two is four X, and we're good to go. So our factor form here, is gonna be the outsides right here. It's gonna be X plus two times by two X plus three. Okay, you with me, right? You with me? I'm trying to go through this kind of quickly, right? So I can show you more examples and going through it quickly. So you might, you might have to pause, rewatch, like please do what it is you need to do, ask questions, okay? Because I know that, uh, you know, this is a multi-step process. You need to get some practice here, okay? It's worth putting in the time at this point. All right, factoring with the generic rectangle is especially convenient when algebra tiles are not available or when uh, the number of necessary tiles becomes too large to manage. Yeah, who wants to mess around with that many tiles here? Um, using diamond problem helps avoid guessing and checking. It also helps you Stay organized, right? Stay organized, right? So in your factor trinomial, draw that di 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 the diamond out, 
draw the rectangle out, figure it out from there. It becomes kind of like a puzzle at that point, um, which can be challenging, okay? Uh, use the process uh, for problem E14 to factor this guy right here. Oh, we did this one. This one's in the silent video. Oh gosh, oh no. So I already have this one given up to us here. Questions below will guide your process. When given the triangle such as this, what two bar generic rectangle can you pl can, uh, quickly complete? Um, yeah, generic rectangle we can put in our, okay? And the, we'll call this this, the X, squared term, right? The quadratic term. Ah, there we go, because it's being squared here. The x squared term and the, I'll call it constant, right? Or what your, what your book might call it might be the ones term, okay? Whatever the number is here, okay? Constant goes in one corner. Constant means that number 12 is, is, is fixed, right? It's, there's no variable really attached to it, okay? Or x to the zero is attached to it, but that just means one. Uh, but anyways, uh, x squared is here, right? So x, x changes, it's a variable. So it's not a constant. 12 is something called a constant, okay? So that's easy to fill out with a generic rectangle. And then it says, how can you set up the diamond problem to help you factor a trinomial such as 6x squared plus 17x plus 12? What goes on top? What goes on the bottom? Here's a little example. This doesn't connect to, well, actually it does connect to this problem. This is the same thing here. Uh, did I, is this the one that I did? Did I mess this up when I did this in the video? I don't know. Let me factor this differently. Oh, this is different. Okay, wait, never mind. This is different than the silent video. Because in the silent video that we had in class, it was 6x squared plus 17x plus 5, plus 5. I got a little afraid because this looked a little bit different. Okay, how can you set up a diamond problem to help factor a trinomial? What goes on top? What goes on bottom? Um, and maybe I need to actually erase this because I think this is actually the answer key right here. So let me, uh, let me get rid of this right here because uh, you guys shouldn't be seeing this in your book. Okay, so they're just asking you to figure this out. Let's do it together right here. So what do we do? Okay, we set it up like this. Now we can get diamonds. Whoa, that's a big uh, big marker. Let's undo that. All right, you're bearing with me here. I know it's a lot to watch these lesson videos, but get my diamond set up. Boom, boom. Okay, what do I do? How can you set up diamond problem is? What, well, steps are gonna be multiply uh the x squared term to the constant and place okay so i'm sort of giving you notes here right notes here like of how to do this okay um what do you do first well put the x squared term and the constant term in one diagonal of the generic rectangle what do you do second right we multiply the x squared term and the constant term and place it in top of the diamond the diamond. This is better than notes because you're thinking about it. You're coming up with your own answers right here. Diamond, okay? So what do I need to do right here? Uh, I'm explaining here. You should be explaining too is I need to do, right, 6x squared times by 12, okay? And that's 6 times 12 is 72. And uh, x squared times by x is 0. So again, it's just x squared here, okay? So that's going to go in the top of the generic rectangle, okay? So you do that. What goes on top? Okay, so this is top. Right, we got to multiply x squared term and place the top of diamond here, and then we got to follow our directions for the bottom, okay? Which is place the x term in bottom. Okay, what is the x term again? Right, we just get that directly from the trinomial up here, right? So we get we put 17x there down in the bottom. So I'll do that right here, 17x. Okay, how can you set it up? Okay, that's how you set it up to factor here. And it says solve the diamond problem here, which I showed you the answer in the answer key a second ago. Uh, so let's figure it out and complete its generic rectangle. Okay, so what I do, right, it can be kind of tricky. Factors of 72, we get two numbers that multiply to 72 and add to 17. There are some options, um, but here, let's go through it here. I usually maybe set up a little list on the outside here. We got factors of 72. So follow my little tricks here, guys. So like, um, you know, stay organized ahead of time and then. You know, maybe I'm not going to left behind if you're, if you're following everything I'm doing. Uh, so factors of 72, I got 1 times by 72, but that adds to 73. So that doesn't work out. We're going to add it to 17. We got 2 times 36. Is that going to work out? Well, it multiplies to 72, um, but it adds to 38, not 17. Let's keep going. 3 times by, um, uh, what is it here to get to 72? 3 going to 72? It does. Yeah, it goes into 24 times. Yeah, 24 times. 24. So you know, some mental math here, right? Mental math. Um, you can use the calculator too to help you out. Okay, that doesn't work out because 27 isn't 17. So let's keep going. Man, 
There are a lot here. Four times by, is this going to be you know, a little closer here? Four times by what, 19? No, not 19. Not 18? Yeah, 18. Four times by 18 equals 72. But that doesn't work out, right? Because uh, that adds to 22, doesn't add to 17. So let's keep going. Five does not go into 72, right? So five will go into 70, going to 75 does not go into 72. So we can cross the five out now. So let's just keep going. Guys, this is the method I follow. I find this to be pretty organized, pretty darn organized here to get this here. Six, because you can easily overlook like a combination, right? You do in your head, you might overlook a combination. So here I'm staying organized here. Six goes into 72. Uh, it goes into 72, um, I'm starting to think, is this actually possible? We're going through so much here. It goes into it 12 times, um, and, uh, you know, so that's 72, but 6 times 12, oh, it's 18. Sorry, 6 plus 12 is 18. Got close, but didn't quite get there. Exit out here. So let's keep going. 7, no, that goes into 70, goes into 77. That's not going to work out. What about 8? What about 8? Eight, 8 does go to 72, right? 8 goes to 80, of course. Subtract 8 from that, you get 72. So that means that means it must be 9. 8 times by 9 equals 72. And, yep, there it is. Okay, there it is here. That's going to work out because 8 plus 9 equals 17. And that's what we have right there. So there we go. We've set it up. It's a decent amount of work right there. It's going to go a lot faster for you after you get some practice. Um, but we're going to put 8x right here. We're going to put 9x right here. And that's the way we're going to set up our diamond. And we're going to set it up here. Uh, we're going to set up our, um, it says here, uh, and complete its generic rectangle. I, again, have the answer key in here. I accidentally put some answers down here. But yeah, we can take what we have uh, from over here and set up a generic rectangle now okay so now that i know this right i know that i have this here and this here i can complete the generic rectangle i can do that i can move that up here i can put 8x right here and i can put 9x right there okay 9x right there and uh yeah i can go ahead and uh factor this and it says write the area of the rectangle's product well did all that work because hey now i follow in casey's pattern here six times 12 is 72 nine times a to 72 and x times x is x squared x squared times x to the zero is just x squared so 72 x squared is the product of both the diagonals so that means this is going to be factorable now all of a sudden yes it's fantastic okay so odd number here so evens are down here so maybe i'll just try some even numbers here maybe i'll put two down i think two goes into six it goes into eight maybe you figure out what the, the the greatest common factors in these ones here let's try three x okay so this is checking out here let's try plus three up here because Three times three would bring it to nine. Two times by four would bring it to eight. So now we've maybe completed our puzzle now. Oh, we have, right? Four times three is 12. There we go. Four times two X is eight X. Three X times three is nine X. Three X times two X is six X squared. We're good to go, okay? So write the area of the rectangle as a product. We've done it. We've done it, my friends. Well, we haven't actually written our final answer down, but we've done all of our work. We just gotta transfer it. Remember the product is the outside. It's the perimeter, base times height. Base times height, not the perimeter, it's the area, right? Base times height. 2x plus 3 times by 3x plus 4. All right, there we go. We got D done. Let's keep going here. All right, so now it's kind of like your exit ticket. It's kind of like, all right, there's your lesson. Got it laid out. Um, can you just do this? Can you do this very quickly, right? Very quickly here. And maybe time, now you don't time yourself yet, but you want to be able to do this in like 30 seconds. That's my goal to you. Not this lesson, but maybe a few lessons from now after we've been factoring these and not here. It says here, use the process you developed in problem 814 to factor the following quadratics if possible. If quadratic cannot be factored, justify your conclusion. Okay, check it out here. Well, we could set up our, our algebra tiles, right? We could set it up here, right? We got an x squared piece, we got a 9x piece, we got an 18x piece. We try to figure out what a rectangle looks like because then we can get our areas of products, right? By getting base times height. Or what can we do? Okay, our method here in problem 814 was diamond, okay, diamond and generic rectangle. Factoring method. Right, factoring method. That's what you learned today, the diamond generic rectangle factor method. So for all these here, if you ever have to factor something, change it from a sum to a product, a trinomial like this here, what do you do? Just sketch it out, drop in your generic rectangle, drop in your diamond. Okay, I'm gonna do this over here too, generic rectangle, diamond. Okay, I'll do those ones down here as well. Okay, same thing, I'll set those up, see if I can do them here. All right, let's start with this one here, start with A. All right, what do I do first? Put my x squared down here, put my 18 here. This is going to multiply to 18x squared. That goes in the top of my diamond. 
okay? This also multiplies to 18x squared, but it's gotta do what else? It's gotta add to 9x. Where did I get that? That's the middle term right there, okay? So now I got factors of 18. So maybe you're doing your head or maybe you're doing the Mr. Fortin, which is this, trying to figure it out, kind of organize with it here, okay? One times 18 equals 18, but you know what? It doesn't add to nine. Two times by nine adds to 11. It is 18 here. Three times by six, there we go. That's it, right? Three times by six gets you to 18, but three plus six gets you to nine. We're good to go. We've, this is how we can solve a, uh, a diamond problem. This is going to be three X here. This is going to be six X here. And it didn't matter if you go in either one, but the key thing is while we've completed our diamond problem, we can take six X and three X here and we can toss them in this diagonal. Okay. So now we're going to fulfill Casey's pattern, which is that this diagonal multiplies to 18x squared, right? Which is the same one as the other diagonal and adds to exact, that exact value of x's that we have in our trinomial here, okay? What does it say here? We got to uh, factor the following quadratics. Are we done yet? Well, we set up the generic rectangle, that's fun. But no, we wanna write this, right? You're not gonna be done with these problems until you've write, written your answers as a product. I'm gonna have to tell Emma, tell her TA to really look out for that here because this is not very clear in the directions, but you should write this as a product at the very end here. I'm gonna have to go back to revise if you're not finishing this. Okay, X plus three is really the only thing that can go there. X um, plus six, there we go. X plus three times by X plus six, good to go. Six times three, 18. Six times X, six X, X times three, there we go. So that's what we got. All right, got ourselves a product. We've finished, hold on. We have finished factoring that one. A plus effort, Mr. Ford, no? A plus effort, fantastic. All right, this one is a little bit harder, right? Because we have this 4x squared in front. We have this minus 15 here. So that means in the top of this diamond, and I'm doing this really small, we have negative 60x squared. I'm going to make it a little harder for you guys here, a little bit smaller here. This is going to have to multiply to negative uh, 60x squared, okay? I'm going to tell you about some of your factors. If you're multiplying to something and the product is negative, what does that mean about your two factors? They're the opposite signs, okay? So we then we have a positive 17x right here. One of the x's is going to be negative and one's going to be positive, okay? So we're looking for kind of like a number bigger than 17, right? That goes into 20. Sorry, that goes into uh, 60x. I think I gave you already the answer here, okay? So anyways... Let's maybe think about this here. Factors of 60, okay? We could do 60 times by one. That's not good, that's 17 here. We can do 30 times by two. That's not good there, there's nothing to do with 17. What about 20 times by three? Well, 20 times by three would equal 60, but 20 plus three would be 23, not 17. But remember, we have to get to negative 60, okay? So you get negative 60 right here. So factors of negative 60 could be 20 times by negative three, right? Times negative three here. A negative times a positive is a negative. And three times 20 is 60. So it multiplies to negative 60. What does it add to, right? 20 plus negative three, well, that equals 17. So there you have it. That's where we're gonna go here. So when, you're, when you're, you're, uh, your diagonals multiply to a negative value, right? So a negative, a negative coefficient here, then one of your x's is gonna be negative and one's gonna be positive here. And and it's at your, your positive one's gonna have to like be bigger than uh, whatever's right here, right? Whatever is right, whatever's right here. So, anyways, um, uh, let's put that down. 20x, and then we have negative 3x. Okay, so this goes in here. I think I said I was gonna put the negative one there, and then this is gonna be 20. So now it becomes factoring time. Okay, this is negative three, right? So that's kind of easy here because actually we had to put we definitely have to put a minus three right there. Well, negative three. How do we get to negative 15? Well, negative three times by Positive five brings me to negative 15 here, okay? Now we're gonna fill in the rest here. So uh, yeah, we gotta go four. The four has gotta be over here because four times by five is 20, right? It becomes a puzzle. I'm just gonna puzzle this point in time. And then we have an X right here, okay? So to get this written out, fully factored as a product, I'm gonna do four X minus three times by X plus five. And there we go, right? These are fun, man. These are fun. I'm having a great time. This is, this is actually not how I factored like when I was in high school. So this is like, it's fun for me to do these little puzzle. It was just like, it was super guess and checky when I was in high school. So it's like, 
you know, nobody felt like they ever really could factor something super quickly or super well when went to high school. But now you can hopefully do it, right? If you follow, if you follow this, right? If you, if you can follow do it the exact way I'm doing it right now for your example. So anyways, I'm having a good time. Hopefully you're having a good time. Yeah, that's right. All right, check it out here. All right, generic rectangle. I'll do a little bigger because the last one was so small. Diamonds. There we go. Just get good. Just sketch them out. Isn't that be beautiful, right? And the math itself, the math itself can be beautiful. All right. 4x squared times by 3, 12x squared. Remember, product on top, sum at the bottom, and the sum of the x's that we have is going to be negative 8x here. Ooh, okay, so they're going to add to a negative number, but they're going to multiply to a positive number. That means both of these are going to be negative. Think about that for a second. How can you have a product that's positive and, and a sum that's, that's negative? Well, you got to be adding two negative values. And then multiplying two negative values. A negative times a negative is a positive value, okay? So anyways, you just get, you get another connection there for you. It's making make your life a little easier here. Okay, so anyways, six and two, I think, is it, right? Negative two times negative six is positive 12. Negative six plus a, plus a minus two would bring you down to negative eight. There you go, right? Set it up here. Guys, this doesn't take long after, after some time. Once you learn the process, you get it done. And you can change it from a sum to a product. We're going to get this done in a second here. All right. So uh, I got my odd number over here. I got a six here too. So this must be where my odd number goes. So this must, I, I need to have a three here or minus three. There needs to be a minus one right here because minus one times negative three. You have to do each of that. So this must be two right here. Yeah, two. There we go. Two X. Okay. So there we go. Two X times two X, four X squared. Two X times negative one minus two X. Uh, negative three times negative uh, times two X is negative six X. And uh, there you have it. We're good to go. We got here 2x minus 1 times by 2x minus 3. And there we go. Factored it up. We got it here. All right, let's keep going. Boom, 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 boom. Um, 3x squared uh, minus 3. And diamonds. Diamonds are forever. Shine bright like a diamond. Um, that was my best moment on video this whole year. All right, 5x goes on the bottom. 3x squared times negative 3. Shine bright like a diamond. Um, and we got negative 9x squared. Uh, so anyways, all right, let's do this one here. All right. After a while, you get to these math stuff, and you're just like, the math is, is, is running you. It's running me right now. I have very little control over what it is I'm doing. I'm just kind of flowing, right? You want to get, you want to be flowing at this point in time. Get it done, right? And pat yourself in the back afterwards. I'm going to pat myself in the back. I definitely will. Um, especially because this is a Wednesday, Thursday lesson. I, I, I hang out until Friday. You'll be all good. Okay, so product. Wait, no. What am I, I'm flowing. I'm losing my mind at this point in time. As if you hadn't noticed already, I am losing my mind. So we do factors of Negative nine, okay, let's do it here. Well, we got one in nine, some sort of permutation of that, right? Negative, so one of those got to be negative, whatever here. That equals nine, but what would it add to? It would add to either um, negative eight, right? If our nine were negative, or if our one's negative, or eight, that doesn't get me to the five here, okay? What else with nine? Well, nine, nine, only one in nine goes into nine, right? Well, the nine's not prime, never mind. So there's another one. What else goes into nine? Three. Okay, so one and nine go into it, go into, into, into negative nine, right? Could be negative one times nine is negative nine, or negative nine times one is negative nine. Um, and then there's also three times by negative three, right? That would bring you to negative nine as well. But what would they add to? What would they add to? It would add to zero. Huh, interesting. So what's happening right here? We don't have negative 8x or positive 8x or 0x for the amount of x's we need to place into our generic rectangle right here and here. So what do you think is going on? What do you think is going to happen here? We couldn't solve, okay, right? We couldn't actually solve this. Solve the diamond problem, okay? Couldn't solve the diamond problem. So this one might seem a little bit more tricky than the other ones, but is it? What do you think might be the case here? What have we seen so far? Well, here, this is written out. We've got a bunch of algebra tiles written out as a sum. We want to change it to a product. We're trying to set up our generic rectangle, but wait a second. When we have a bunch of algebra tiles, can we always set up a rectangle? No, we can't, right? We can't actually find a way to lay out these five X's in such a way that it would multiply to negative nine here, okay? So what is our answer here? It's going to be not factorable. There it is. There it is. We have... 
proven it, right? If we can't lay out the amount of x's we have on a diagonal where it would multiply to what the other diagonal is in that generic rectangle, we can't set up a rectangle. Can't do it if you have those times. So if you have 3x squared plus 5x minus 3, never be set up a rectangle. And therefore, you can't factor it. Can't write it as a base times by height value. And that's the lesson. That's it, right? That's it. If your Thursday is done, you got it all done here. Make sure you spend some time on this lesson. Maybe redo it if you weren't feeling super confident about it here, especially if you got it done on Wednesday. Um, and that's about it. Now you're factoring stuff. Friday, let's practice some factoring. I think we might have a quiz the following Friday, right? It feels about right here. But let's just keep jamming on this stuff, man. Hang out. Do some algebra one together. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, email me if you have any questions. Take care. Have a good, have a good Thursday. Bye.